Hey David here. I'm sure this happened to you. I was watching uh, Hickok 45 and Military Arms Channel having way too much fun with an Uzi and I thought I need to get one of those. Especially with the political currents going on you never know when something's going to be outlawed and uh, you young guys you ought to start collecting firearms as much as you can. Collect as much as you can because you never know what the future's going to hold. Also you need to defend yourself. So, I was going to buy an Uzi from Century. I think they run about $600 or so. And I've been hearing some mixed reports about the quality of their work, so I decided to build a kit. So, this is what I have. Oh, this is who I ordered it from. RTG Parts in Sheridan, Wyoming. So this is the kit. parts kit. It's minus the receiver. You can't uh, get the receiver because it's a full auto. It's a submachine gun and uh, according to a 1986 law called the Hughes Amendment uh, no more new machine guns can be built anymore. That was a law signed by President Reagan. It was passed in uh, Congress with uh, Tax Chief Charlie Rangel presiding over the session. He took a voice vote. Uh, if you saw the video, you'll know that uh, uh, the fours uh, didn't pass, but they passed it anyway. A uh, uh, request for a roll call was denied. And if you do a search on YouTube, just do a search of Hughes Amendment and look for the video that shows the session of Congress. You'll get to see it for yourself. I don't want to get political, but uh, that's uh, that's where we're at. So if you want to build a kit, you have to build it semi-automatic and you have to follow the laws that were made by ATF. So uh, this part, this is full auto and uh, uh, first of all let me say I've never done this before. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to learn as I go along some things that I've heard. Uh, this is not the receiver even though it's got a uh, serial number on. This is not the serial numbered part and that's why this can be shipped in the mail. It's got a, a uh, three position selector and according to ATF from what I've heard the full auto selector which I believe is full forward has to be disabled so uh, there has to be a bar welded in here to stop the selector switch from going to the full auto position. Uh, there were no mags that came with this. Uh, these kits are available with a, a receiver, but the receiver will be cut up with a cutting torch or a bandsaw or something so it cannot be made full auto. This is the bolt. It's a full auto bolt and uh, this bolt would have to be converted to semi-auto. If you look at the firing pin, well the firing pin is in here. It's a, a fixed firing pin. Uh, so it would have to be converted to a floating firing pin by drilling a hole completely through the bolt. I don't have the machine tools to do that so I'm going to buy a semi-auto bolt. I understand I need a buffer as well and uh, I believe I need a semi-auto sear. This is the top cover. The top cover. You can hear that ratchet in there. ATF considers that a machine gun so the ratchet has to be removed and I believe it's in here. I'm going to have to learn how to do that. But um, they don't like the ratchet. The ratchet has something to do with firing from an open bolt. Uh, ATF does not permit open bolt weapons on uh, newly constructed weapons. So uh, the semi-auto feature will be a closed bolt firing. Uh, this is the stock. It's a collapsible stock. So since it has a stock, it has to be built as a rifle with a barrel 16 inches or longer. These are the hand guards that came with the kit. Kind of rough shape. Look at them close. Looks like it's been dragged through a parking lot. 
as opposed to the grips. The grips aren't aren't as bad as the hand guards, and it's got a grip safety. And there's some miscellaneous parts in here, which uh, I can't identify. No one of these. Come on. One of these is the barrel nut. That's what's nice about the Uzi. The barrel's easy to take out. It's just held in with a threaded barrel nut. There's a spring. I don't know where that goes. Just going to have to familiarize myself with this. By the way, you can build it as a pistol with a barrel shorter than 16 inches. You just can't put the shoulder stock on. Okay, let's take a look at the receiver. You can buy the receiver as a flat and fold it and weld it yourself. I don't feel confident doing that. And you can also buy a receiver as a uh, pre-folded receiver but not welded and you can do the welding. I think once you have one of these and if you have a welder, you could probably use this as a guide and build your own. You can see uh, this part is a, a feed wrap and barrel support that's welded in. The uh, ejector looks like it's riveted in. There's a rivet there and there's the underside of the rivet. Uh, this part this part is welded in. That's some type of lug probably for the hand grip. This back plate is welded in. Not sure about the rear sight on the front end. Not sure about the front sight base. That might be a weld as well. This part looks like it. This part is welded in. So I'm guessing yes. This is the front trunnion. This is welded in. It looks like a hole was drilled in the flat and it was uh, welded through. Uh, when you get a barrel for this, you have to, there's two types of barrels, a, a submachine gun barrel and a semi-auto barrel. So you have to make sure you get the semi-auto barrel. Uh, and it's unfinished, so you have to put a finish on it. Either paint it, parkerize it, blue it. And uh, this is who I bought it from. Bought it from McKay Enterprises in Minnesota. Uh, it's kind of nice. There's a write-up in here that gives the ATF laws that'll uh, assist in uh, the construction of the project. So uh, that'll help you keep it legal so that you don't get sideways of the law. Uh, it shows you a list of all the parts that was in the first kit I just showed. So that's kind of nice. So I know what the parts are. Yeah, it does mention that you have to remove the ratchet mechanism from the top cover. So uh, these instructions are great. There's also instructions in here for the welding a blocking plate in the grip. Shows the dimensions of uh, where to set up the blocking plate. And it even has uh, easy to follow instructions on uh, the dimensions of the plate and how to put it in. Here's a picture of what the plate looks like. I know it's hard for you guys to see. It's kind of a dark picture. But this little bracket is coming off of the selector switch and this plate stops the bracket from uh, any more forward movement. And this is great. Here's a picture of the sear. It looks like you don't have to go out and buy a semi-auto sear. You can modify the full auto sear. And uh, it shows you what it should look like. It might be good to keep the auto sear just in case the Hughes Amendment is repealed and uh, they permit us the freedom of uh, full right citizens again. But uh, you got to check the laws in your area. If it's illegal for you to own it in your area, uh, you're going to have to get rid of it. Uh, not all areas of the country are the same as far as freedom goes, so just uh, beware of that. Here's a picture of the uh, 
That is a semi-auto bolt and that's what the firing pin looks like. So I'm glad they have all these instructions. There's some sources for Uzi parts listed down here if you get stuck for parts. And uh, you guys know how slow I work so it's probably going to be a while till I finish this. I've got a lot of other stuff going on in my life. But I'm looking forward to getting started on this anyway. Oh, by the way, I do see some spot welds here. So this, uh, this front sight part is spot welded in. It was kind of faint. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there are marks of spot welds. So there it is. Thank you for watching.